and welcome back to Play and Trade Guitars. I'm John, that's Zach behind the camera, and this is Play and Trade Guitars, where we play it and trade it. In my first video where I looked at the Kemper Player, I was so excited, it showed up, I unboxed it, I gave you a first look, kind of out of the box. I followed that up with an in-depth demo, using it with Rig Manager and getting the basic setup. In today's video, I wanna follow up and tell you how I'm using the Kemper Player in my rig today. I'll show you the pedal board that I decided to go with, it's pretty awesome. But remember at the top, if you're in the market for the Kemper Player or any gear, click to buy new gear using our link, it really does help us. And uh, I'm gonna jump in today and tell you how I'm using the Kemper player. So let's get started with the pedal board that I chose. This is one of my favorites. This is basically a carry-on sized suitcase from Boss. This is the Boss BCB 1000. And I chose this for obvious reasons. It makes it really, really portable and really easy to bring my entire rig. And this is basically including the Kemper player, which I'll show you here in just a second in action. But now this is my amp, my pedals, but it's replaced what used to have in this 8U rack, my Kemper rack unit, which is now in my desk, my console desk I'll show you. And then I had uh, the pedal train pedal board. I condensed all that down, thanks to the Kemper player, down to the Boss BCB1000. And I would love to hear in the comments, if you have a Kemper player, how have you built out your rig and what pedal board are you using? Because I'll show you now how this works, but it's pretty dang convenient, so let's take a look. It's made to drop straight on the stage. And then check this out. You got four latches. And as I pop this lid, there is my entire live rig when I'm using the Kemper player. And then these are all the pedals that used to live on my pedal train. So you can see I don't use anything super crazy. It's about the same size roughly as an HX Stomp. For comparison, here's the profile remote from Kemper. So you can see it takes up a lot less real estate than that. And then this, uh, we're gonna be featuring this on the channel soon, so stay tuned, make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, we'll be checking out the Fender Tone Master Pro. So again, for relative size difference, you can see the Tone Master Pro is essentially this entire board. And uh, so far, I've been super happy. Again, let me know how you're using the player in your rig. Let's get dialed in. Now this is cool. I actually have underneath the board, you can't see it. I have a Voodoo uh, power bank uh, that has an extra outlet on it. Um, so one thing I will say is kind of a drawback about the player is the power supply. It's kind of bulky and fat. You can see that in my unboxing video. And so what I did is I tucked that down under the deck and plugged it in to the power supply, which is normal kind of uh, nine volt connections for my, the rest of my pedals, plus the power supply I'm using from Kemper, which is plugged into that Voodoo power supply underneath the board. My intention for front of house playing live is I'm just gonna use the Balance XLR out for simplicity, so that's how I'll wire it to the Apollo X4 today. It can store up to 50 profiles, so I just basically only use one bank. I've got a few different profiles I use for various sounds that I want, but the main one I just have locked to number two in this particular bank, and I know when I turn it on it's already there, but if it wasn't for any reason I would just hit two, and that's my sound. And then the way I program these, since I have the effects you can see on the board, I also have a chorus that I occasionally turn on. And check this out, you get this digital display that tells you exactly how much it's in the mix. So if you want less chorus in the mix, these lights will actually show you that, which I love. Um, and then here's my longer delay. So I, I tend to keep this, this Boss DD7 on in an analog setting for just a very light slapback effect, uh, just to kind of beef things up. And then if I want a longer, like Echo Man style time-based delay, I kick that on with Effect 2 and I used to have the time-based tap tempo over here, um, but as you probably know when you build a board out, you run into uh, some challenges along the way. I had the time-based thing here and I couldn't step on it because this pedal was in the way. So it's easy enough to go into Rig Manager and tell exactly what you want to assign these buttons. So that's what I did. And uh, let's pull up the computer and see how it sounds. The heart of my profile that I'm using on the player is the M Brit or Michael Brit 67 Deluxe Reverb. I've tweaked that just a little bit um, and I've added on the player itself after my stomp box effects, I have a chorus that I can turn on. And then I have a time-based delay.
But the heart of what you're hearing right now, and I'm recording this direct so that you can truly get the experience of sending this XLR straight to you. So you're hearing it through YouTube right now, just the direct recording, nothing else blended in. This is what it sounds like with no pedals on whatsoever. those Michael Britt profiles. They sound so good. So again, that's nothing on. So what I'll leave on all the time, I have a Keeley compressor that I'll leave on all the time. And I have just this Boss DD7 in an analog setting that just has a little bit of slapback. So then you start to get this. <laughs> Not too drastic of a change yet, just some basic compression in front, followed by that slapback delay that I always leave on. And that's my basically purely clean tone, so. I love on a Telecaster the middle position. Stay pretty much bridge position and get a little bit more rock in on this one because now i'll show you i love this super basic super cheap super overdrive sd1 so this will be my first stage of overdrive <laughs> neck position <laughs> So let's talk solos. I have the ability at any point, my favorite solo boost here, I got this GT500 that on the left side, I have a boost that I can turn on. So here's kind of a lead idea. And if I turn on the boost, So that's my basic overdrive, uh, but then with a boost. If I want to go to more distorted tone, I have this distortion channel here that I really like. that for the simple way that I play in terms of those are all my gain stages, if I wanna add in those extra time-based effects, those are now programmed in my buttons. So say I'm doing something um, with the time-based delay like this, I can then I can tap the tempo. And again, kind of my standard overdrive. It's super handy to have the longer time-based delay if I need it, plus the tap tempo. And then if I wanted to turn on just a little bit of chorus. Occasionally, I'll turn on the chorus, and it's just really nice to have that right there on the board without taking up extra real estate with the stomp boxes. So that's how I'm using it. I just love that I could literally roll this on stage and take the top off and just plug in one XLR. And you know, I don't even need to bother with the USB cable. I just have that so that I can mess around in, in uh, Rig Manager if I want to. Um, you can also obviously add this to your phone and control it from your phone live. And that's really cool. You need to make sure that you have it on Wi-Fi setting to set that up. I did notice it was a little kind of clunky to set that up, um, but that's the idea. And then a lot of the comments I noticed on my first video talk about, well, I still want to bring a tube amp. 
And I love tube amps too, but to me, profiling, you know, modeling, I think profiling to me is my favorite technology in terms of getting the ability to replicate the feel and tone of a tube amp without lugging around a heavy, heavy amp. And it's not just because I'm lazy, although that's part of it. It's because in many circumstances, it's completely impractical to lug around, you know, a stack or a tube amp. It's just not, it's not possible, especially when I'm, when I'm traveling. So this makes it, you know, this is what I was dreaming up in my original unbox video, and I have it here today. Tell me what your board setup is starting to look like, or if you have a better board suggestion than the boss, although I'm absolutely loving this one so far, uh, let me know in the comments. If you're in the market for the Kemper player, use our link, you can buy that. You'll find that pinned in the comments or down below. We're also giving away a Martin D28 acoustic guitar when we hit 100,000 subscribers. To be in it, to win it, it's easy. Just hit subscribe now, turn on notifications, and then enter via Gleam. You'll find that entry link also pinned in the comments or in the description. And uh, I'm just super excited by this technology. It makes the ability to focus on playing that much more because with me and gear, it comes down to trust. I love to be able to just turn it on and have it work. And I trust Kemper because when I plug it into the front of the house, it's gonna sound like how I want it to sound out there in the house. And then through my in-ears, I just love the way it sounds full. It doesn't sound digital and brash or lots of high end with a lot of bite. It just sounds so lush and profiling technology is absolutely amazing. So you can see here too in the rack to, to prove to you how committed I am to using this player on stage, I went ahead and remounted the Kemper rack over here uh, in my desk. So it's it's there. I've, I've retired it to studio use only, which is awesome. Um, and now, you know, I kind of have this satellite camper profile or, or camper player that is always on my live board and I've consolidated a lot of gear doing all this. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. I'll uh, finish it up with switching over from single coil to humbucker and let you hear a Les Paul through these settings too, which is always fun. <laughs>